Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. So I want to come on here and talk about the whole Snoop Dogg and Gail King situation. It looks like that Dragon Ball T episode is finally coming to a head, okay? So what's going down is that basically about 20 minutes ago, Snoop Dogg took to his Instagram page. He put on a brand new scarf and he stated that basically his mother reached out to him and called him out on his BS. And this is what his mother said. He wrote on his Instagram page, he stated... Had to talk with my mama. Thank you, mama. Two wrongs don't make a right. Time to heal. At Gail King, peace and love. Praying for you and your family as well as Vanessa and the kids. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys Snoop Dogg's apology. Go ahead and check this out. Stop the morning. Coming at you live and direct. What a message. Two wrongs don't make no right. When you're wrong, you got to fix it. So with that being said... Gail King, I publicly tore you down by coming at you in a derogatory manner based off of emotions, me being angry at questions that you asked. Um, overreacted. I should have handled it way different than that. Uh, I was raised way better than that. So I would like to apologize to you publicly for the language that I used and calling you out of your name and just being disrespectful. I didn't mean for it to be like that. I was just expressing myself for a friend that wasn't here to defend himself. Um, a lot of people look up to me and they love me and they appreciate me, so I want to let them know that. Anytime you mess up, it's okay to fix it. It's okay to man up and say that you're wrong. I apologize. Hopefully we can sit down and talk privately. Have a good day. All right, so you guys just heard what Uncle Snoop had to say. So this entire situation is very interesting. First and foremost, what the hell's up with that damn audio? That audio was shitty as hell. Now, when he went on that rant cussing her out, we heard him clear as day. We heard his ass loud and clear. It was crisp. But now it comes to the apology. There's all this shakiness in the audio. The audio's going in and out. One second he sounds clear. The other second he sounds like he's in a basement. I don't know. I'm just saying. But... With that being said, I am glad that he apologized, but I also feel like the reason why he apologized is because of public pressure, okay? Because Gail King, you know, let's let's keep it real. She's closer to the white media than she is the black community, especially with everything going on because a lot of people are really mad at her and Oprah. So I think once the white media got involved and they started, you know, calling out Snoop and calling out Martha Stewart, Snoop got nervous because that cooking show Martha Stewart is a good source of income for him. And people were trying to set up boycotts for the show. They were demanding that Martha Stewart speak out and, you know, have Gail King's back as a woman. Well, where's corporate America? Because there are people- Where who is corporate America? Him. Where is Viacom? Partnerships. Let me him. say it again. A black female journalist fears for her life this morning. Her children are facing abuse and threats. And the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, Viacom, nobody is talking about this. After preaching on a mountain for years about how dangerous it is when Donald Trump threatens members of the press. Well, guess what? I think it's dangerous when Donald Trump threatens members of the press. And I think it's dangerous when pop culture figures threaten members of the press, especially a black woman doing her job, who is only doing her job. You know what? We can have a debate whether the question should have been asked or not. We're so beyond that right now. We are so beyond that right now. What's the conspiracy of silence about New York Times? Why aren't you writing about this? What about you, Washington Post? Wall Street Journal, where are you? Viacom, where are you? A black woman has gone to bed, a journalist, in fear of her life for, what, five, six days? And there's a conspiracy of silence. Reverend, you've... You're one of the few people that's been talking. One person in entertainment doing talk shows, 
who did who would post something like this that wouldn't be fired in three seconds and by the way less Dog, than they were filming yesterday with Martha Stewart um, he, he they were filming yesterday for VH1 the Martha and Snoop oh series God. potluck party challenge it's supposed to be on the air tomorrow night Viacom. yesterday Vi Vi that, that's Viacom yes, who, by the way. yesterday they were filming Martha Stewart was there William Shatner was there Tamar Braxner was there Trey songs was there they were all there working with Snoop on on set to film an edition of the show that will show and they um, say he speaks week. for himself they say he walked it back he did an additional post still leaving the threatening profanity laced post up that millions of people can watch right now he did an additional post sort of trying to make Gail look older trying to do little dog whistles while sort of saying maybe we're not violent it was not an apology he did not pull it back he actually made it worse you have the white mainstream media, like Joe Scarsborough, speaking on behalf of black women and coming with capes to, you know, defend black women. And I don't really know how I feel about that because I feel like the way he's going about it, it's very agenda driven. I know some black women are boosted behind this and, you know, oh, you know, look at white men are taking up for us. But I just see a bunch of agenda behind this. I see this as a way for them to use this as a talking point to drag Donald Trump into it and a bunch of other stuff. So I'm not boosted. I'm not gassed up. And I don't need Joe Scarsborough speaking on anything concerning the black community. Just my opinion. You have Rose McGowan coming out against Snoop. You had a lot of people coming out against Snoop and his misogyny. And people were really upset about that. And Snoop did try to ignore it and keep, you know, living his life. But I think the pressure definitely got to him. Hence why he's apologizing. Because let's keep this real. If this was just a regular average black woman, no apology would have been given. It would have been business as usual. But because Gil King definitely has pull, I definitely believe that that is why he's apologizing. Because the heat got way too hot in the Martha Stewart kitchen. No pun intended. And, you know, looking at this whole situation, it's sad. You know, it went from calling out Gil King. And like I said, I stand by every video I made about this. Gail King and Oprah have done things that are hypocritical in my eyes. I speak for myself. I'm not the voice of anybody. I'm the voice of Lovely T, period, point blank. They've done things in my eyes that are hypocritical. Like I stated in my first video, you know, you want to ask about Kobe to another black woman who's not his teammate, who's just there to talk about a friend. You're putting her in an uncomfortable position. But you yourself are still friends with Charlie Rose. This man is alive and well. He has, you know, up to 27 new accusations against him. Why are you not being interviewed and talking about your relationship with Charlie Rose and if you believe that he's a rapist? And that's my issue is like, you know, what's good for the goose is not good for the gander in all situations. If Oprah doesn't want to talk about her friendship with Harvey Weinstein and that she believes that he's a rapist and a, and a deviant, then why keep pushing narratives that may affect black men's careers like Russell Simmons, Michael Jackson, things like that, if you're not going to do the same thing for the white male counterparts? So that's been my issue. Because as you guys know, I cover a wide range of stories here. I discuss topics of all races. I hold everybody accountable. The same way I can make a video about Bill Cosby, I can make videos about Harvey Weinstein. I can make videos about Russell Simmons and R. Kelly. So why can't Oprah and Gail do the same thing? So that's my issue with them, okay? Now, as far as Snoop, I felt like, you know, he had the right to state his opinion as far as him being hurt and trying to hold them accountable. But all that cussing and the low key threats, I will never stand by that. I will never stand by somebody trying to, you know, imply a threat or low key threaten somebody or even plant that seed of dissension in their fans because it was his video that got people riled up. And like I said, I watched everything played on social media. So you're not going to tell me that, oh, well, Snoop really didn't threaten her. He was just talking slang. Slang or not, a lot of people took that as a threat, and a lot of people ran with that to go threaten that woman. And that's never okay. I think the saddest part in all of this is that this went from a discussion about Kobe Bryant to a whole black man versus black woman debate on social media. I mean, even in my latest video, I've been attacked by black men. You know, shut up, bitch. Don't you ever come for Snoop. I mean, it's like, wow, really? You're blocked. You know, so it's just like you can't even hold people accountable and say, you know what? I see what you're saying here, but you took it too far here. And if we can't even have dialogue, how do we expect to move on? So I'm glad that he apologized, but I'm not going to lie. I still feel like the apology came because his sponsorships were at risk. 
his show was probably at risk, and the mainstream media got involved. Because I've watched too many things play out on social media where some of these black men have disrespected black women, and it's crickets. And I think that at this point, we need to hold each other accountable as a community. I have no problem with black men calling out Oprah and Gail on the facts. The facts that they're not, you know what I'm saying, putting out the same information with their white counterparts when they behave badly as they are with their black counterparts. That's facts. I don't think that means that they're woman bashing or that they hate black women. That's just facts because that's the moves that they're making. But as far as threatening them, calling them out their name, disrespecting them, it's not okay. I think we should be able to have dialogue as adults and have open communication without all the nonsense and BS that I see on social media. So I hope what comes out of this is that people learn from this. Like I always say, any situation, I don't care if it's a viral situation or something going on in your personal life, you always look at that situation, you ask yourself, what is the learning lesson from this situation? One thing that we can learn is that when you're emotionally attached to somebody or emotionally attached to a situation, it's not always good to speak when you're highly emotional. Sometimes it's good to come back and then state your thoughts with a clear mind. Because like I said, the first part of Snoop's rant, I loved it. He made some really good points. He was speaking very articulately and, you know, calling her out. But then as it got near the end, that's when the emotions kicked in and he was trying to basically, you know, put on a show for his audience. And that's what he didn't need to do. You're a grown man. I think he's almost 50. You don't need to put on a show for your audience. I expect that from people like, you know, who are 19 and 20, not people damn near 50. You know, so I just think that, you know, looking back on it, there's lessons that can be learned. Even for Gail King. If you're going to talk about a situation that's going to be sensitive like that, keep it on the topic. Don't start bringing up this man's past when the man wasn't even in the ground yet. And then the fact that she tried to shift the blame on CBS, I will always hold her accountable for that. When you make a mistake as a grown adult, you stand in your shit. You stand in your shit, you apologize for it, and you acknowledge your mistake. You don't then try and shift the blame to CBS and say, well, CBS put out the most salacious part of the interview. I didn't agree with that at all. I felt like she wasn't standing in her shit. CBS didn't tell you what to say, and even if they did, you chose to say it. It came out of your mouth. So there's definitely a lot of accountability that can be placed on these different people throughout this situation. So I'm glad that this is coming to an end and that it's dying down. I'm sure Gail is happy and I'm sure she'll definitely accept Snoop's apology. Let's not forget this was Gail King, Oprah, and Snoop Dogg not even a few years ago. They were all buddy-buddy. So I'm sure they'll be having a private conversation and, you know what I'm saying, trying to smooth shit over because, you know, you can't, you know, you can't lose that bag no matter who it is. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation concerning Uncle Snoop apologizing to Gail King. Do you accept his apology? Do you think it's sincere or do you feel like he's only apologizing because he's scared of losing his show and his sponsorships and because the white mainstream media got involved? Because let's keep it real. He's never even apologized to his wife publicly like that, okay? Mm. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to thumbs up the video. And last but not least, make sure you hit the notification bell so that we can be down with the notification squad, honey. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, deuces.